Jeremiah chapter 35. The word which came to Jeremiah from Yahweh in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Go to the house of the Rechabites and speak to them, and bring them into Yahweh's house, into one of the rooms, and give them wine to drink. Then I took Jaazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazaniah, with his brothers, all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites, and I brought them into Yahweh's house, into the room of the sons of Hanan, the son of Igdaliah, the man of God, which was by the room of the princes, which was above the room of Maaseiah, the son of Shalom, the keeper of the threshold. I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites bowls full of wine and cups, and I said to them, Drink wine. But they said, We will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, You shall drink no wine, neither you nor your sons, forever. You shall not build a house, sow seed, plant a vineyard, or have any. But all your, day, all your days you shall dwell in tents, that you may live many days in the land in which you live as nomads. We have obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he commanded us, to drink no wine all our days, we, our wives, our sons, or our daughters, and not to build houses for ourselves to dwell in. We have no vineyard, field, or seed, but we have lived in tents, and have obeyed and done according to all that Jonadab our father commanded us. But when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up into the land, we said, Come, let's go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans, and for fear of the army of the Syrians, so we will dwell at Jerusalem. Then Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah, saying, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will you not receive instruction to listen to my words, says Yahweh? The words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine, are performed, and to this day they drink none, for they obey their father's commandment. But I have spoken to you, rising up early and speaking, and you have not listened to me. I have sent also to you all my servants the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Every one of you must return now from his evil way, amend your doings, and don't go after other gods to serve them. Then you will dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers. But you have not inclined your ear, nor listened to me. The sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded them. But this people has not listened to me. Therefore, Yahweh, the God of armies, the God of Israel, says, Behold, I will bring on Judah and on all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I pronounced against them, because I have spoken to them, but they have not heard. I have called to them, and they have not answered. Jeremiah said to the house of the Rechabites, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Because you have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father, and kept all of his pre precepts, and done according to all that he commanded you, therefore Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Jonadab the son of Rechab will not lack a man, not lack a man to stand before me forever. Well, if you're watching this in the distant future, you may not have realized, but it's actually been about three months since I recorded Jeremiah 34. <laughs> it's been a huge big gap, and I've had some family leave, and I have really appreciated being able to take that time off at the church. And so to all of those who are watching it in the present, and you've been journeying with us through the Bible, thank you for your great patience, and it's a great pleasure to be able to get back to the Bible. And so here we are in Jeremiah 35, and in an interesting chapter, the chapter with the Rechabites. This group of people, um, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, he, he was a guy that we actually did briefly um, kind of encounter in the Bible back in, uh, where is it? In the book of Kings. The book of Kings. You might remember Jehu was the guy who went roaring through the desert in his chariot, well, they lived at the time of Jehu. It was in that period of Israel. They lived in the north. 
And so we roughly encountered these Rechabites. They weren't called Rechabites back then. It was just Jonadab and his father, Rechab. But these people now, uh, the Rechabites, are the descendants of that guy that we were briefly mentioned before. And uh, he must have told them at some point, you know, don't drink wine and, um, you know, live in tents. Don't build, build houses. And these people, for hundreds of years, have done just that, which is uh, an amazing thing. <laughs> so God sets up this test for them and basically says to Jeremiah, you know, invite them into the temple and offer them wine. So it's, to me, this is the strangest thing. It's like, you know, at high school, you know, someone offering a cigarette to another teenager and you know and i remember as a as a um as a teenager being told you know you're probably going to be offered a cigarette or offered drugs or something in high school and you know make sure you don't give in to peer pressure you know i was really clear that uh you know if i ever get offered these things it's not good for my health it's not good for you know they're, they're addictive avoid them at all costs and i was really clear and you know a few times that I, those things were around, they didn't tempt me in the slightest. And um, I guess something like that happened here with the Rechabites. They were so determined, you know, we are not drinking wine, that when Jeremiah says, here, have some wine, <laughs> they just say, no, we don't drink wine. We follow the, uh, the, you know, the instructions given by our, and notice how they call him our father. But he's actually not their father. He's their great, 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 many greats father, grandfather. So the Bible sometimes uses the word father, but it means, um, you know, someone that lived a long time ago. And we often refer to Abraham as our father. But of course, he's not directly our biological father, but he's our father in, in spiritual matters. So they pass the test. They don't drink the wine and they demonstrate obedience to something they were commanded. And then um, God uses that as an example to the people of Israel who have not been obedient to the things that the Lord has commanded them. I think it would have been an, an interesting time because um, they said that they were nomadic. So here's a group of people that live in tents. They said that, come, let's go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans. So in other words, Nebuchadnezzar is about to attack Jerusalem. He's about to surround the city. And all these Rechabites have come from the north and they've filled the city of Jerusalem. In other words, the city is filled with tents. Would have been an amazing sight seeing Jerusalem filled with tents. It's all these Rechabites that have flooded in. I thought it was interesting too that in the very first chapter, verse first of this book, God says to Jeremiah, or second verse, go to the house of the Rechabites. You notice how they um, are not living in houses, they're living in tents, but God says go to their house. So the house obviously isn't a physical house, it's referring to this like family group. The family group is called a house. And then he says speak to them and bring them to Yahweh's house. And now Yahweh's house isn't a house either, it's the temple. <laughs> so I think it's very interesting how in this one chapter the word house is used in so many different ways. And in the New Testament, we find out that we are the house of God. We are his tent, or we are his tabernacle. We are his family. We are the place where God dwells, but God also dwells in us together. So sometimes if you like read the Bible and you, you're like too literally strict with words, you can really just miss the meaning. But when you see that the word, these words are used in so many different ways, you can actually get a greater and a far richer meaning. So we've got this nomadic group, the Rechabites. They follow the instruction of their great ancestor, uh, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, and they don't drink alcohol. And, um, and some people have uh, started these groups and these societies that are in the world today called the Rechabites, and they are teetotalers. They don't drink alcohol at all. And there's a big discussion, of course, in Christianity about whether you should or you should not drink alcohol alcohol and there are different types of churches so you've got um churches like the salvation army that are very strong that you know not they're, they're very strongly against alcohol there are some churches like um even the roman catholic church and the anglican church they use alcohol for communion and um in in those in the catholic church in particular they believe that the the communion wine is so sacred that it if there's leftovers you can't pour it down the sink 
the priest has to drink the leftovers. And there's even occasions when the priest drinks a lot of leftovers. So these are really different perspectives on alcohol. I thought it was really interesting, you know, at the time that the Salvation Army was starting out, this is the 1800s in um, England, that William Booth was preaching this fiery message um, and he was preaching it to people who were really affected by alcohol, alcoholics and people who were struggling with gambling and people who were really poor. And it just seemed like the wisdom of God at the time to preach such a strong message like that. At the same exact time in England, there was another preacher, he's very, really famous, Charles Spurgeon. They call him the Prince of Preachers. He was preaching messages like, um, out of the Song of Solomon, like, God's love is better than wine. And he preached messages explaining all the wonderful things that there were about wine, but then explaining how God's love was even more wonderful. So at the exact same time in England, there were two preachers. One was preaching to wealthier class people about, you know, wine is okay but God's love's even better. And, and William Booth preaching to the poor, avoid alcohol at all costs. And so the debate about alcohol just isn't simply resolved. But in the New Testament, it very clearly says, do not be drunk with wine. And so um, it seems like in the Bible, there's an allowance. Um, as the Holy Spirit allows you to drink wine, but God certainly will convict some people, like these Rechabites, not to drink wine. Or some Christians, like William Booth and the Salvation Army, not to drink wine. So we have to allow room for the Holy Spirit to do what he wants. But no matter what your perspective, getting drunk is not allowed. It's not a New Testament thing. Seems like we are to maintain self-control, control of our bodies. And so we've got this interesting chapter here. And if you were to say, what's the main point of this chapter? Some people have said, don't drink alcohol. <laughs> no, that's not it. The main point of this chapter is clearly that the Lord wants us to follow him and obey him. And the example of the Rechabites, it's not the example that they didn't drink. The example was that they followed the instruction of their ancestor, just like we should follow the instructions of the Lord. So, Father, I thank you. You give us such clarity in the Bible. And I thank you that the Holy Spirit and his great wisdom can lead and guide and direct people, even at the same time and place in history, but according to different things. Lord, like Spurgeon and Booth in England. And so, Lord, I ask that you would lead and guide us and that we would not be deaf and blind to your leading, but we would follow the voice and the commands of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.